Hi, everyone. I hope you're excited to finally get to start calculus after our two weeks of pre-calculus review. Um, the word calculus comes from the Latin word for pebble. You can imagine that in the old days they used pebbles or small stones to do some calculating for simple arithmetic and that sort of thing. And it's from that word that we have the word calculus today. Almost all the time that you hear the word calculus, it refers to what we're doing in this class. But sometimes you'll hear somebody talk about the moral calculus or the political calculus or the ethical calculus of some decision. And there, of course, they're not referring to this type of calculus, but just a general way of calculating or reckoning what the thing to do is. Before we get into the real exciting part of calculus, we have to start with something called average rate of change. So calculus is going to be all about finding rates of change of different quantities. We learned the very first day that a linear function has a constant rate of change, which is very special. But any other function that's not linear will not have a constant rate of change. But we'd still like to figure out how fast those functions are changing, how fast something that's growing in some curved way or sinusoidally or logarithmically, how fast those quantities are growing. And calculus will allow us to do that. So let's suppose that we have a function that is the number of gallons of water in a tank at time t in hours. What is the average rate of change of this amount on the interval from 4 to 9? I suppose we should give you what the formula for the function is here. It was supposed to be f of t equals 10 square roots of t. <coughs> this notation, if you haven't seen it before, is called interval notation. This from 4 to 9. So we have a brief little aside over here to explain how interval notation works. When we put the a and the b in brackets, these square ones, different countries call these different things. So if you're watching from some other part of the world, you might not call these brackets. But in this country, we call them brackets. This means that the endpoints are included. So bracket a, bra comma b, close bracket, means a less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b. When we use the rounded ones, which we call parentheses, then we don't include the endpoints. And I think this is really nice notation. It actually looks like this includes a little bit more than this, which is exactly what it means. This doesn't include the endpoints. This does. And you can mix and match. You can close, have a closed interval on one side, open on the other, and vice versa. So now to get back to this, we're looking at the interval from time 4 to time 9, and we want to figure out what is the average rate of change of this quantity. So you should ask yourself how you would compute this. And I hope that you'll think about something like you want to figure out what is the actual amount of change in the, of the water, so the change in the amount. And we'll talk about in a minute how we can find that. Change in the amount divided by the change in time. In calculus, we're going to have lots and lots of times where we're going to say change in. So we abbreviate that with a Greek letter, a Greek letter capital delta. So in this case, since our function is y, the change in the amount is measured in y. So that's change in y over change in x. And this is the capital Greek letter delta. And of all the different Greek letters we could have chosen, why do you think we chose delta for this? We chose delta because it so it's the Greek letter that sounds like our English letter D for difference. So this is the difference in the y values, in other words, change in y over the difference in x, change in x. So what remains is for us to figure out what these actually are. So how much water did we gain during this time? I guess this shouldn't be x here because our input is t, so we should be calling this delta t. So the amount of water that we have at the end of the interval is f of 9. And the amount that we had at the start of the interval was f of 4. So this is how much water we gained or lost during the time. And the time was 9 minus 4. And now we have to figure out what f of 9 is. If we plug 9 into our function, we get 10 square roots of 9, which is 30. And this is 10 square roots of 4, which is 20. And on the bottom, we have 5. And if we simplify that, I think we get 2. And now we should ask ourselves what the units should be on this. The units in the numerator of this fraction were the amount of water, so that was in gallons. And down here was the time, so that was in hours. So this would be 2 gallons per hour. So that's the average rate of change over this entire interval from time 4 to time 9. Now calculus will be about finding the, at the rate of change at any given moment. Like how fast was the amount changing exactly at time 5, for example. And by the time you've mastered calculus, you'll be able to answer that question. But we need to do a little bit of work before we can get to that. 
Now, I hope that when you looked at this, change in y over change in t, this, this thing minus this thing, that reminded you of having computed something earlier in your pre-calculus life, namely slope. So if we were looking at this graphically, if we graph our function f of t, looks like this. We went over here to 4, and we went over here to 9, and we computed the slope of this line that goes between there. And if you remember from our talk discussion about trigonometry in week 2, this is a line that cuts through the curve, not a line that just touches the curve and grazes it, but cuts through. So we called that a secant line. So the slope of this secant line, again, secant because it cuts through the curve, is exactly what we figured out over here, 2. So the average rate of change on this interval was 2 gallons per hour, and we can see that graphically by looking at the slope of the secant line. So we're going to keep coming back to this, looking the connection between formulas and numbers and graphs is going to be something we really want to emphasize in calculus. Now that we've done that, we want to just formally define what our average rate of change is for any old function. We're just going to use what we did over there. So the average rate of change of any old function, y equals f of x, on any old interval from a to b is what we just did over there. Change in y over change in x, which is like saying y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then graphically, this gives us the slope of the secant line from the point, from this point to this point. And now you'll notice that these are actually points in the Cartesian plane. These are not intervals. You have to know from context whether you're talking about interval notation or about a point. But this is the starting point, and this is the finishing point. And we're computing the slope between those two points. And that's average rate of change. We have a short little check your understanding for you to uh, do on this. And then we'll go on to instantaneous rate of change.